Hi, I'm Renee Ruiski with Free Tours by Foot in New York City. I'm going to take you on a walking tour of Greenwich Village. We'll hit the highlights. We're going to start here at the Jefferson Courthouse. Originally, there was a women's detention center on this site. Several famous people have been incarcerated there, one of whom was Mae West, the old vaudeville and black and white movie actress. She was known for her colorful language. She ended up being arrested and spending one night in the women's detention center. Today, this is part of the New York City Public Library system, and upstairs there is a Mae West conference room. You might recognize these gardens from Sex in the City, and this is where Miranda and Steve finally got married. We're going to head across Christopher Street. We're going into the heart of Greenwich Village. Originally, this area farmland settled by the Dutch. The Sapahonic Indians were in this area. They grew tobacco, and they taught the Dutch how to grow tobacco. We are about two miles north of the original New Amsterdam, so the Dutch called this area Nordwijk, the North District. It became known as Groenwijk the Green or Pine District, that name stuck. So when the British took over in 1664, they anglicized Groenwijk to Greenwich. There's a Greenwich in England, so they call this Greenwich Village, but that's a redundancy. Groenwijk means Green District or Green Village. We are saying Green Village Village. Behind me is Gay Street, named after the Gay family, one of whom was Sidney Howard Gay, an editor and abolitionist. But Gay Street curves. The streets in Greenwich Village do not follow the grid. 1811, city laid out all the streets. Avenues go north and south, streets east and west. When they came to the village, the people here said, no thank you, we have our streets. They're old farm trails and Indian paths, but they work for us. We're not going to straighten them out. and We're not going to name them what you want us to. So we'll be on streets with large curves. We'll be on streets that go off in odd directions. We actually have some streets here with two names and two separate street signs. People get lost in Greenwich Village all the time. Across the street is the Northern Dispensary. This was a clinic. It offered low cost or free medical attention. It opened up in 1827. A gentleman by the name of Edgar Allan Poe actually came here in 1837 to see the doctor. He lived around the corner on Waverly Place. Waverly Place, if you watch the Disney Channel, you might recognize the name from the TV show, The Wizards of Waverly Place. We're coming up on Christopher Park. Notice the beautiful federal style homes and the dispensaries considered federal style architecture. Originally, it was called Georgian architecture, but after our Revolutionary War, nobody wanted the style of their home named after the King of England. So the Adams architectural firm coined the term federal. Very simple, not a lot of decorations. In 1965, all races achieved civil rights in the United States. Gay men and women had no civil rights. They could be fired from their jobs and even kicked out of their apartments just because they were gay. 1969, it's illegal to serve alcohol to gay men and women in 49 of the 50 United States. Back then, Illinois was the only state without that law. 
across the street, the Stonewall Inn, on a hot night in June 1969, riots broke out there, lasted for six nights, brought attention to the fact that gay men and women had no civil rights. One year later, on the first anniversary of the riots, in New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles, we had our first gay civil rights parades. Back then, they were called the Christopher Street Parades because they started over by Washington Square Park, and they came down here in front of the Stonewall Inn on Christopher Street. Those sculptures by George Siegel commemorate the fact that those riots really brought attention to the gay civil rights movement. I said in National Historic Park, we are going to spend most of our time on streets with brown street signs. That means you are in an historic district and the Landmark Preservation Commission tells the building owners what they can and cannot do to the exteriors of their buildings. 7th Avenue, originally just a path to get downtown. But as more people are moving north on Manhattan Island, they're working down in the financial district. The city decided to widen 7th Avenue and put in the subway. But there was an apartment building right here. They used eminent domain. That's a law in this country where the government can seize your property for the public good. The owner did not like the idea, sued and lost the lawsuit. He ended up with 500 square inches of private property that he memorialized in tile. Property of the Hess estate, which has never been dedicated for public purposes. And when I was a child, there was a wrought iron railing around here. Gives you a sense of the attitudes of the people who lived here. And it also explains why we have such odd shaped buildings going down 7th Avenue. You'll see some rectangular buildings with a corner that's been cut off because that's what they did when they widened 7th Avenue. On this corner, we have the Big Gay Ice Cream Shop, voted one of the 10 best ice creams in the United States. My favorite, the bourbon ice cream sandwich. You have oatmeal raisin cookies, bourbon ice cream in the middle. So I get all my basic food groups. Marie's Crisis Cafe, named after Thomas Paine's The Crisis Papers. Fun pub. But Thomas Paine did die here in 1809. And right next door is Arthur's, the oldest continuously used jazz club in New York City. The Cotton Club was founded prior, but the Cotton Club has moved to different locations. Arthur's has been right here since 1937. Via Carata, Travel and Leisure magazine, says this is the best restaurant in New York City. Oftentimes there'll be people eating on the sidewalk as we're coming through. Food smells delicious. Ahead of us is Bleecker Street. If you are a Sex in the Cities fan, you might remember the Magnolia Bakery. New York City residents don't go to Magnolia Bakery for the cupcakes. They like their banana pudding. As we cross over, we're going to come up on a beautiful Greek Revival home, which ha also has a lot of history to it. So over here on my right, you're going to see beautiful Palladian windows, columns, portico, Greek Revival cornice stretching across the top. Built in 1830 as a private home, it became a rooming house. And Mr. Chester, a thespian, was living here when another thespian approached him to be part of his plot to kidnap President Abraham Lincoln, John Wilkes Booth. Chester didn't go along with the plot but he didn't tell anybody. So when it became an assassination plot, they were successful at killing President Abraham Lincoln. 
This is a wonderful residential neighborhood. These homes built in the 1840s, originally as middle-class homes. 1950s, these become working-class homes, and many of them were cut up into apartments. In the last 10 years, these have all been purchased and refurbished back into middle, middle and upper-class homes. So today, this is a more expensive neighborhood. But when these were built, these would have been dirt roads, horses and horse-drawn carriages. So we still have some of the old boot scrapes in the neighborhood. You can tell if the railings are original to the homes because they'll still have the boot scrapes in them. We're approaching what is the last wooden house that was built in Greenwich Village. We had a fire in Lower Manhattan, 1835. Fire was in the winter, and that winter it had gotten so cold, the rivers froze over, they couldn't put out the fire. More than 670 buildings burned down in that fire. So this did not burn because it's too far north from the section that had the fire. But the city started to pass building codes and you are no longer permitted to build with wood on Manhattan Island. Behind the house is a workshop. It was used by the sash maker and behind that Twin Peaks. That's a refurbished apartment building, subsidized housing for writers, artists, musicians, and actors. Today, it's expensive apartment building. Across the street is the Friends apartment building. Originally, this was all filmed in California, but they used the facade for the apartments and Central Park. For you Friends fans, you might remember the first two years, the ugly naked guy that lived across the street, and actually, he was in that apartment building. And then the last two years, Ross lived over there. Coming down here to Grove Court, this was originally built as low cost living. These were built behind the main houses. That's Hudson Street. Irish immigrants worked on the docks that were originally located there. They could be injured or killed but their families could afford to live here. Our tastes change over time. Today, this is one of the more expensive areas in Greenwich Village, because who wouldn't want to live off the main noisy street? Nice, quiet courtyard with a gate and a garden out front. Oh, Henry, the short story writer, he called Greenwich Village the district of high art and low rents because this is where the artists lived until they became famous. Oh, Henry's known for that short story, The Gift of the Magi, but he wrote another one called The Last Leaf. And it was about a young lady who lived there at Grove Court. She was sick and she believed she would die when the last leaf blew off the vine in the, na in the courtyard. When they made the movie Full House, it's five of all Henry's short stories made into one movie. They filmed The Last Leaf there at Grove Court. It's an old black and white 1954 movie. If you see it's going to be on, watch it. Could you get to see what this neighborhood looked like in 1954? Across the street is 86 Bedford Street, and this was Chumley Speakeasy. We had that period in our history, Prohibition illegal to serve alcohol to anybody in the United States. So you had back rooms where the alcohol would be set up. You got into Chumley's around the corner through an arched gate. If you knew the password, they took you through an interior courtyard into that back room where the alcohol was set up. The police would come and raid. Somebody would run in that back room and yell, 86! go out the 86 Bedford Street exit and you'd escape being arrested by the police. 
in the restaurant industry today, they still use the term 86. It means the chef ran out of something. In front of us is the oldest house in Greenwich Village, the Isaacs Hendricks farmhouse. Mr. Hendricks was a copper dealer. He sold copper to Paul Revere and to Robert Fulton to be, build the steamships. And down the street, the tall building on the left used to be the silo when this was a farm. Today, it's the Cherry Lane Theater. That is the oldest continuously used off-Broadway theater in New York City. But when it opened, it was an off-off-Broadway theater. Come and take the tour with me and I'll explain why that all changed. The front of the oldest house and next to it, the narrowest house in New York City. It's nine and a half feet wide on the exterior, eight feet two inches on the interior. 30 feet deep, it is four floors. There's a plaque on the front and it says, this was the home of Edna St. Vincent Millay. She lived there when she started the Cherry Lane around the corner. This tour, usually two hours long, we take you further into the West Village where you get to see more homes of famous people. You get to hear wonderful stories about how this neighborhood grew and how this culture developed. As we're going down the street, we're going to come up on Washington Irving's home. Washington Irving is considered our first true American author. He's famous for coining several terms, one of which is almighty dollar, another one, Gotham. And that represented a town or a city that was full of people who are a little foolish. Knickerbocker, that represented the old Dutch families. And today we still use the term for the New York Knicks, our basketball team. And then he was the first to use the term donut. Dutch families made pastries. They called oily cakes. They were round pieces of dough full of fruits. They then deep fried them in pig fat. Today's donuts are slightly different, but it Americanized that type of pastry. And two blocks down the street is the Donut Project. We're headed into what was the Italian section of Greenwich Village. Italian immigrants came here pretty much 1880s into 1910. They settled where other people from their villages had settled or where family was located. So we have several distinct Italian neighborhoods. Little Italy, settled by Sicilians. Greenwich Village, settled by people from Genoa. Then Arthur Avenue in the Bronx, Naples. Here on my left, Bleecker Street Pizza. Voted one of the best pizzas in New York City. According to the New York Times, Food Network, Jimmy Kimmel, and TripAdvisor. They're Nona Maria. It's a margarita pie Tuscan style, chunky tomato sauce, fresh mozzarella, fresh shredded basil across the top. They don't use semolina flour underneath. They actually toast breadcrumbs, mix it with herbs and spices, because that's the way their grandmother made it. Up ahead of us is John's. John's is famous. I've seen people line up to get a table here. Okay. John's still has the coal burning ovens. They're unloading the coal to take it down the basement. Coal burning ovens burn very hot. John's is different from other, other pizzerias because they only serve whole pies. They don't sell slices. Because that oven is so hot, 
the crust gets nice and crispy. So it's not appropriate to take it and reheat it as you do with a slice. Okay. In front of us, Faico's. And Faico's opened in 1900. This delicatessen makes their own homemade sausages and sauces. Arancini, the rice balls. They're known for their Italian heroes. All those cold cuts sliced up on nice soft rolls. Pizza crust, bread, New York City different than other cities. The water is delivered here through um, stone viaducts. So the water picks up the minerals in the stone and it produces pastries that have nice crispy crusts, doughy interior. Across the street is Rocco's. And Rocco's is famous for its cannolis. When you go in and order your cannoli, that's when they put the ricotta filling inside. Most bakeries fill their pastry first thing in the morning. They let them sit there getting soggy. Not at Rocco's. To our right is Our Lady of Pompeii Church and school. And I said Italian section. Two blocks up is St. Joseph's Roman Catholic Church and School. This is the Italian school. St. Joseph's was for the Irish immigrants. And up here on the corner, I'm going to show you Joe's Pizzeria. Joe's makes Roman style pizza, very thin crust. Their sauce is slightly sweet. I tell everybody, come down, stop at Joe's, get a slice, eat it while you're walking to Bleecker Street Pizza, get a slice, and then come back and tell me which one you like better. Slices. You do not sit down in New York City with a fork and a knife to eat pizza. Come on. You take that wedge, you fold it in half, you take that point, flip it in. Take your napkins and put them right here because all that wonderful olive oil with the herbs and spices is going to run right down your hand. You want all of that because that's where the flavor is. We're crossing 6th Avenue. We're going into the beatnik and rock and roll section of Greenwich Village. The beats were those poets. Beatniks were the NYU students that hung out in the coffee houses with the poets. We're headed up Minetta Street. This originally was a brook. Came from 23rd Street, went all the way down to the Hudson River. So the farms were here originally because they could use the water from the brook. After they stopped farming, NYU built their buildings and they said they filled in the brook. But people who live here will tell you, we get a solid day of rain, they can hear the brook running underneath the street. On YouTube, you can find videos where they've gone and picked up the manhole covers and they show you the brook. The brick building across the street, that was used in the movie Serpico. That's what they used as his apartment building. This is what they used to call Little Africa. When they outlawed slavery in New York, this is where those former enslaved people came to live. And then after the Civil War, freed enslaved people came up looking for jobs and they settled in this neighborhood. More kept piling in, wasn't enough room for them. They started moving north on Manhattan Island. They headed up into Harlem. So the churches moved up into Harlem. The people followed their pastors. By 1910, we had fewer than 600 African-Americans living in this neighborhood. This neighborhood is now full of clubs. This 
is the famous Café Wa. The owner named it Café Wa with a question mark because his Russian immigrant grandmother didn't understand a lot of English. So when somebody would talk to her about something she didn't know the answer to, she would just say, Wa. Bob Dylan played here the first night. He came to New York City, played harmonica backup to the house band. Jimi Hendrix, Bruce Springsteen. Across the street is Minetta Tavern. That was the hangout of Hemingway, Fitzgerald, Theodore Dreiser. Then it became the hangout of Jack Kerouac, Dylan Thomas. Today it's famous for its $33 hamburger. And across the street, the green and white banner that says up and up, that used to be the, ha the home of the Gaslight Cafe. Bob Dylan, Joni Mitchell made her New York City debut there. Richie Havens, Bruce Springsteen. Today, you might recognize it from the TV show, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Ma Moon's, our first falafel restaurant in New York City, and then Cafe Reggio. Cafe Reggio, first cappuccino restaurant in New York. They actually have a cappuccino machine that goes back to 1905. Up on the corner, you're going to see NYU's law school, New York University. NYU is the largest private university in the United States. There are more than 50,000 students on this campus. And they have several campuses throughout the city. You're going to see purple and white banners as we go through this area. They all say NYU. The campus actually goes all the way around Washington Square Park. Up on the left is the Provincetown Playhouse. It gets hot and humid here in New York City in the summers. In the early 1900s, writers, artists, musicians, and actors headed up to Provincetown on Cape Cod, escaped the heat, but they got bored. They started putting on skits to entertain themselves. They came back to New York City and they opened up the Provincetown Playhouse. And that is where Betty Davis made her stage debut. She was one of the original Provincetown players. We're headed into Washington Square Park. We're going in the section where the chess players sit. The movie Searching for Bobby Fischer actually was filmed in this section of the park. The movie The Queen's Gambit has made chess popular again. You'll see people over here enjoying a game. Just know it costs money to play with them. Originally, this was a swamp. The Minetta Brook came right through the swamp. And we had mass graves here. Smallpox, yellow fever, cholera outbreaks. The wealthy built their Greek Revival row houses on the northern side of the swamp. So the city decided to make this into a military parade ground. They paved over the top of the swamp and they brought in the artillery, which sank. It's a swamp with bones underneath it. They had to excavate the whole thing. They tell us they found between 10,000 and 20,000 bodies buried here. After they cleaned it out, they're making it into a formal park and they realized they were coming up on the 100th anniversary of George Washington taking his oath of office, standing on the balcony of City Hall on Wall Street. So they dedicated the park to George Washington. And they hired Stanford White, famous architect from New York City, to build a wooden arch over Fifth Avenue. The wooden arch became so popular, three years later they hired Stanford White to build the Marble Arch. 
based on the Arc de Triomphe in Paris, George Washington has two statues facing Fifth Avenue. One, he's a general, and in the other one, he's a statesman. The arch will show up in TV shows and in movies. It's letting you know you're in New York City. And several TV shows and movies have shown this park. August Rush, they're on the corner of that building. They're looking into the fountain. The fountain was the entertainment pet. When Harry met Sally, Meg Ryan pulls right up in front of the arch and she lets Billy Crystal out of the car. I Am Legend, Will Smith, uses number 11 across the street as his laboratory. And then we have Barefoot in the Park, Robert Redford and Jane Fonda. Nice days, you come into the park, there'll be musicians, there'll be people sometimes protesting different things. It's always a lot of activities going on here in Washington Square Park. Now I'm hoping you enjoyed this tour, gave you a brief synopsis of Greenwich Village. Hopefully you'll come to New York City and you'll take the full two hour tour with me. At the end of this tour, I'm also hoping that you'll leave me a tip. We'll put my PayPal and Venmo address up for you. If you have questions, you can feel free to email me. I'm always happy to try to help. Come to New York, take our many tours in our different communities of New York City.